What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Truth Life Podcast. I'm your host, Tyron Johnson. Today, we're on episode 75. We're still in our financial literacy season. You know, we're getting our money right, we're getting our mentality right about money. And, you know, we're doing everything we can to live a life of freedom. Truth Life is all about freedom. Take respect until freedom. One of the best ways to get freedom is to get your money right. So today's episode number 75, and today I'm going to get a little bit personal. I'm going to tell you guys the top 10 personal finance tips that I've learned that has helped me become better with my finances because it really changed my life. You know, I really put in a lot of work. It was a lot of trial and error, a lot of ups and downs. But at the end of the day, you know, I think I'm I'm still learning. I'm getting together. I'm way better than I was before. So these are top 10 personal finance lessons that changed my life. First thing was paying off my debt. Debt is something that's very advertised in America. The thing about debt is you got good debt and you got bad debt. If you got a house note, you know, you got a 30 year mortgage or something like that and you want to you plan on staying in the house for the next 30 year. That's a big debt, but that's not such a bad debt. Now, another debt is getting a car. That's when you have a crazy note that you have to pay every month. I'm talking like eight hundred, nine hundred dollars per month on a vehicle. That's kind of a bad debt. You know, it's just sucking away your money. Unless you got money like that, but the average person in America don't got money like that. So that's a bad debt. If you got a car that's sixty, seventy thousand dollars and you make forty thousand dollars a year, you're wasting your money. My opinion, so I sold my car. I only got to use my car two months out of the year. Overseas player, this is a overseas player, this is a suggestion for you. This is not, you don't have to do it, but this is just my suggestion. You don't have to get a car in America, bro. If you consistently get in a job and you constantly overseas, you're only home for two months out of the year. That car is doing nothing but causing you money and causing you problems. You're still paying a note. You're still paying insurances and you're still keeping it up while somebody else is driving it or nobody else is driving it, which will cause more problem in the long run. Anyway, save your bread, stack up your bread. Don't buy a car. Rent a car, use a friend car, something like that, but don't buy a car. Just a tip that I will give you guys. But I paid off my debt, man. And paying off my debt, I used the snowball effect. Dave Ramsey, I read the book Dave Ramsey, Total Money Makeover. And I took care of the smallest debt first. And constantly seeing those little wins of paying off debt, feeling better. Like, whoo, got that off, got that off my back. Got the next one off my back. Help me be motivated to continue paying off my debt today till today where I have pretty much zero debt. And it's an amazing feeling when you don't owe anybody. So that was one thing that changed my life. The next thing was my budget. Budgeting probably was the most single-handedly most responsible thing to have to that contributed to my happiness. Having a budget takes the stress of money off of me. You know, I don't have to worry about where every dollar is going. I don't have to worry about if I have enough money. Is this too much money? Does this fit the budget? Yes or no? I just have to be disciplined. And like I always say, man, I'm using the 70, 20, 10 method right now. My team pays for my car. This is another tip for overseas player players. I'm using the 70, 20, 10 method. My team pays for the car and pays for the home. They pay for insurance and pretty much everything. If you're playing in a Western European country, I'm not sure about too much on the East. I never played in the East. Um, but if you're playing, most likely if you're playing in France or Germany, Spain, and you continuously got a job, I don't see how you don't do the 70 20 10 rule. 70% of the money is being invested, 20% of the money is being spent, 10% of the money is being given away. That's my, that's my way of doing it. Some dude could do 60, 30, 20. That's six, six, some dudes can do 60, 30, 10, or uh, 60, 20, 10, which is 60% investing, 30% um, spending, and 10% giving, or do the 20% spending and 20% uh, giving. It's up on you. 
it's your own choice. You know, you do whatever you want to do. But I use the 70, 20, 10. I want to save and invest as much as possible while my team is taking care of my most expensive bills. So that's what I would do. Um, another thing with the budget is tracking your money. I got an app called the Track Every Dollar app, which is another app by Dave Ramsey. Um, and I put everything in it. Every time I spend a dollar, no matter if it's one dollar, two dollars, I put it in this app so I can know where every dollar goes. Once I know where every dollar goes, okay, now I can start adjusting my budget. I mean, I may need some more money to go towards here. I can take this off. This is costing me too much money. You can start paying attention to where your money goes when you track your money. Always track your money, man. Trust me. Um, number three was getting multiple streams of income. I know I'm a basketball player, and sometimes, especially fans, fans think that basketball players have to be stuck in this box that we just have to focus on basketball 100% of the day, when in actuality is we work out, train maybe three or four hours a day, five or six if you taking your job serious and put in extra work, but you still got another a, a 15, 16 hours to do nothing. So I don't know if they expect us just to sit around the house all day in a foreign country and not do anything. But, man, take that time, spend maybe two or three hours a day or two or three hours a week, whatever the case may be. Build some multiple streams of income. Some of my multiple streams of income is I do freelancing on the side. I make logos for people. Um, I do digital art for people. I do cover work for artists and rappers. Um I do all kind of things that's dealing with the Adobe suite, I shall say. Um, editing videos, editing highlights, you know, just helping guys build a brand identity on the internet. That's a that's a that's a side hustle for me. I make um, my own beats. That's bringing in money. Uh, music beats for rappers. That's bringing in money. Um, online training. I teach people how to score with the make and pay scoring system. I got the make and pay ball handling uh, system. That's teaching people what I know how to do best. Score, play basketball. That's a side hustle. Um, what else I got? Let's see. Um, ebook. I just dropped a new ebook, How to Make Them Pay. That's a book where I'm teaching. It's for pretty much middle schoolers, elementary school, high school, and college players of both genders on how to become a pro how to use the doubt to fuel your success, you know, for, for guys that's not really getting looked at, for, for people that's really being overlooked or undervalued, how to overcome that, you know. So it's another way I make money. Um, uh, live events, I got my camps, my, my basketball camps that I do in the summer. That's a way to give money, get money. That's a way to give back. That's a way to get money. That's a way to connect with the community. Um, what else? We got mentoring. I mentor a lot of pros. I mentor a lot of kids. I mentor a plethora of people. You know, it's money in that. People pay me to mentor them. So that's a way to make money. Um, the last one is investing. You know, I invest heavily in index funds right now. And that's a way to make money of just investing like everybody else. I'm investing heavily in index funds. I'm getting into real estate. I'm getting into crypto a little bit. I'm going to start investing in valuables like Rolexes, timepieces, and stuff like that. I invest in this camera. This camera is expensive. This lens is expensive. But it's bought me back because I take photos of people. I do music videos in the summer. So this camera, I've probably tripled the money I paid for this camera. I bought the camera for the whole setup might have called, cost me about five, dollars $6,000. But I've made about... Fifteen twenty thousand dollars from this camera, so it's all an investment. Finding multiple streams of income so that whenever something happens, I always have something else I can fall back on. That has that has changed my life tremendously. Um, number five was I became a minimalist. Um, I, one thing about me, I realized that I didn't need much. I've always been a kid that was pretty happy with sim a simple life. I like to create. I like to play sports. And I like to talk to people. I love community. And that's all I pretty much need. I've never been a guy that was into brands or into being the it guy. I would always 
shy away from that. You know, I was always the guy that was trying to create something to evoke emotion for people. That's where I find my happy spot at. So I started realizing that I, I like to be fresh, but I can be fresh with a minimalistic approach. So my closet consists of maybe two pair of pants, uh, two or three T-shirts. I got like two or three pair of sneakers, a couple of socks, one or two belts, uh, some jackets, one, like one or two jackets, one for cold, one for like a sweatsuit type of situation. I wear the team gear like I'm wearing today. I wear that a lot. I got an um, African chain, one or two watches, cheap watches. And that's my wardrobe, man. Like I can take my whole wardrobe with me everywhere I go. All I need is one suitcase because I don't have much. I don't need much. But I got a lot of tech stuff. That's where I spend my money at on tech. Um, yeah, man, keep on going. But if, if you get a chance, check out my website, tyronjohnson.com. Make sure to check out the site. Check out the online training. Check out the ebook. Check out the, the, the um, you could hit me up for mentoring. You could hit me up for pretty much anything you need, man. Like I said, I do design. I do a whole bunch. You need music, I make beats. Tyronbeats.com. Anything you need, man, connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, on my website. I got a contact page. Send me an email. We can chop it up, man. We got we to gotta start living this truth life. But um, number six, I started reading finance books. Now, I've been a reader. I've been a big-time reader a long time. But I always pretty much read self-help books. Those self-help books would help me create my personality, create my mental toughness, how to get through situations, how to be a better organizer, how to be more productive. But I started reading finance books because I realized that I was financial, financially illiterate. I did not know how money worked. I didn't understand the language. But as soon as I started reading these books, man, my whole life changed. The total money makeover from Dave Ramsey was huge. Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. That was huge. Unshakable by Tony Robbins. He taught me about... Um, Index funds, that was huge. And I just finished The Millionaire Next Door. That was a game changer. Realizing that most millionaires are right next door to us, but they live a, a, a very frugal lifestyle. So reading finance books really changed my life and changed the way I seen money and thought about money. Number seven was learning to say no. This was a big one for me because this was tough. I'm a people person. I'm sorry about that. I'm a people person. I like to please people. That's what I do. And it's my gift and it's my curse. But I had a problem with saying no. Family members would tell me the saddest of stories. Friends would tell me some of the saddest of stories. And I'll feel sorry. I'll feel guilty. And I just give them the money. I just give them the money because I felt like, you know, I trust them. They must be really going through it if they're coming to me. Big mistake. No, no, no. Big mistake. Most of the time, you should give people the money. Don't loan them. If you love them, give it to them. Be unless you have a certain date that you expect this money back, unless you have a certain interest that you're putting on it, okay, do it that way. But if not, just give it to them because if you're expecting it back, it's going to cause a strain within a relationship. So I've learned to say no unless it's a dying situation. I'd rather tell them how they got in that situation and how they can get out of it before I just come to save them every time. You can't save them because you give them $50, $40, they'll $50 and $40 you to debt. $100, $200. Next thing you know, you done gave them about $1,000 in an eight-month span. You're not solving their problems. You're not helping them out. You just keep on prolonging the situation. You're being a crutch. and You're not helping them learn how to walk. You're just helping them walk. No, nah, you got to take the crutches away from them. They got to figure it out. It ain't that hard when you're living in a first world country. All right. Number eight was starting, starting to celebrate my progress. Buy something. Buy, like, have fun with the money. Do something. Do a bucket list situation. Do, get something that I always thought of. Um, one thing I bought was, once again, this camera, um, this laptop, um, a lot of uh, plugins to make the beats that I use that I really wanted, like certain sounds that I always wanted. I just celebrated last week. I bought something called Keyscape. It has like almost every piano you can think of. It was like six, seven hundred dollars. This is the type of things that I love, and I love to travel too. So 
I celebrate my progress, man, by enjoying life, having fun with the money that I've made. You know, not overspending, but I'm not giving it to a club. I'm not giving it to a designer brand. I'm not giving it to someone, someone, someone else's lifestyle. This is my lifestyle. I like to create. So I like to have the best to create, you know. And just to go back to learning to say no, I want to add on something because you got to understand that certain people when saying no to people for money. This is going back to number seven. What everyone happiness or fun is totally different just because they like to turn up, just because they like to deal with a lot of partners, just because they like to go on these trips, girl trips or homie trips and spend all this bread just because they like to go to the bar and spend all this money or go shopping and spend all this money. That don't mean that you have to do that. You can easily get tricked in saying yes to too many things. And next thing you know, you're going out every week in a, you're in a lounge spending three, four hundred dollars. By the end of the month, you done spent eight hundred, nine hundred dollars on a lounge, on clothes, on turn ups. If that's not you, that's not you. If that's you, cool. But really do some deep soul searching to find out who you are, what makes you happy, and use your money on the things that makes you happy. Use your money on your experiences that you want, not on other people's experiences. Use your money on your experiences. Other people's version of fun is not yours. Don't fall for the trick. So number nine, stay away from fast money. That's one thing that I've been good with, I guess. Coming from the country, we're kind of skeptical about many things. So I never really had this problem, but I can see where some people get sucked into it. But don't get sucked into a, a get rich quick scheme those pyramids and all of those things like that. It may work for some people, but for the most people, it doesn't work. You get all these messages about Forex and you should do this with crypto and this and that. Forex traders, I did some research. I've seen that maybe 2% of them are successful and they go crazy. They have to watch the market all day long. That's not what I'm into. If you're into that, cool. But for most people, you're not into, you're not going to be watching the markets all day. So most likely you're going to lose. Every person I know that traded has lost money. Haven't made any money. They've made 10, 20,000. Man, I'm winning. Next thing you know, how much you got? Lost it all. Lost it all. Getting rich is pretty simple, man. If you have a plan and some discipline, getting rich is easy. I'm in no rush to take no big risk. I'm changing up my portfolio. I'm going to start divvying out. I'm going to start diversifying a little bit. But crazy, I just seen a Grant Cardone episode, um, a Grant Cardone interview about real estate like two days ago. And I'm thinking about going all in on real estate. I'm probably going to keep my index funds because they've been doing so well. But I'm like, man, this real estate stuff, it's fun for me. But I'm thinking about going deep into it and see 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 where it's going. But the plan I have right now, I shouldn't have to work after 40. So I might have to work for another couple of years, but I don't have to take these big risks on Forex and crypto and stuff like that. Although I'll tell you my new portfolio I'm doing. I'm doing 35 index fund, 35% of my portfolio going to go to real estate, and 35% of stocks, I'm sorry, 50% going to be on index fund, 50% going to be on individual funds. I'm going to do, I think, maybe 15% on like my own business. Um, I'm going to, Tyron Johnson, the personal brand. I'm going to do like 5% on crypto. I'm going to do 5% on like valuable, other valuable things that I want to buy that pretty much hold value. So I think that's how I'm divvying it up. I can't remember all the numbers, but I think that's pretty much it. And that's how I'm going forward, man, and see if it's work. I'm going to track my net worth to see, is it, am I growing or am I not? And I'm going to make adjustments along the way. But I'm really getting into real estate, and I'm really studying the market to see if I can find, you know, a good good couple of properties to get into some multifamily units or something like that. But the last thing, man, that I learned that changed my life about personal finance is no, negotiating. Everything can be negotiated. You never know what you can get. And I was always shy about this. Look, whatever his price is, is his price. I never negotiated. But when I started doing freelance work, I noticed that people was negotiating with me all the time. And I was like, hmm, I got you. Now, don't be disrespectful. Just, you know, 
do something that you feel like it's it's fair. Be fair with negotiating, but negotiate all prices, man. Pay attention to everything. Anywhere that you can save a dollar, save a dollar. That's my opinion. That's my top 10 tips, top 10 lessons, I shall say, that I learned that changed my life and my personal finances. My finances, my net worth has gone up month by month every year. It's a beautiful thing to see. I'm happier now with my money. I am more peaceful, um, no concern. I actually, I'm happy spending money because I know that the money is there to spend. And I know when I get to a certain point, I have to stop. So, you know, this was good, man. This was an amazing episode, I think, because I was vulnerable. Let you guys in on a couple of my personal finances. And I hope you guys can implement some of these things and get your finances right. But please like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you're watching, if you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, please leave a review. Download the episode Share it with your friends. And until next time, every day, make them pay so that one day you can live a truth life. I'm out. I'm out.